Uh, thank you, Honourable Speaker. The Honourable Speaker, and uh, Turangbal and uh, Tuidakau. Honourable Prime Minister, Honourable Deputy Prime Ministers, the Honourable Leader of Opposition, uh, Honourable Cabinet Ministers and Assistant uh, Ministers, Honourable uh, Members of Parliament, uh, those of you in the gallery, and people of Fiji who may be listening to this broadcast through Alexi or live streaming or simply listening on radio. Honourable Speaker, I rise to provide a ministerial statement on a recent trip on the 11th International Cooperative Alliance Asia Pacific Ministerial Conference. But before I do, sir, uh, allow me to uh, offer some uh, remarks. Firstly, sir, uh, the House is a, uh, a bit poorer today uh, in the passing of um, uh, Mr. Lemeki Senimbal, who passed away uh, while we were away. And I uh, take this opportunity on behalf of uh, the Parliament to extend our condolences, recognize his significant contribution to the smooth running of this august body, and also share our condolences with his uh, family, sir. I'd also like to uh, congratulate the Fiji and Rua on their magnificent win against the Queensland uh, Reds, uh, maintaining our top eight position, and hopefully, sir, put them on a sure footing to qualify for the quarterfinals. Mr. Speaker, sir, this statement uh, I thought I'd bring to our attention because uh, it uh, keeps, uh, is in keeping with uh, the desire of the People's Coalition and this government to continue to rebuild the country and look at avenues to really leverage or um, activate uh, more economic activity in the country. And certainly, uh, after being uh, at this conference, our focus on cooperatives is certainly an area that we need to focus on. It is a well-known fact, uh, sir, that uh, we have prioritized the development of cooperatives as one of the key vehicles for economic development and rural transformation across the country. We have done this, sir, uh, for many reasons, such as it actually suits our way of life, our communal spirit, and the way we conduct ourselves in Fiji and the Pacific. It actually is quite interesting, sir, in listening, when I was listening to the international governments, they did share the same parallels in terms of community spirit and the way they conducted themselves. Cooperatives, sir, if governed properly from a policy level and an implementation angle, has the ability to unlock the productive use of idle resources, pool resources together, and derive economic returns for the communities. They are, of course, a source of employment and poverty alleviation and contribute to achieving sustainable development goals. Mr. Speaker, sir, I suppose it is fair to say that our work in the cooperative development space has begun to get international recognition leading to the government receiving an invite to the ministerial conference. I must also mention that this is the first time that the minister responsible for cooperatives has attended this conference, which happens every four years since the 1990s. Mr. Speaker, sir, the ministerial conference was held in Jordan from the 28th to the 30th of April. Mr. Speaker, sir, we, there were two actually Pacific Island countries that were invited, ourselves and the uh, government of Papua New Guinea. My colleague could not make it, so I was the only representative from the South Pacific. And I can uh, say that I tried my best to uh, do justice to our presence at that conference. In the conference, Mr. Speaker, sir, the theme was partnerships between government cooperatives for cooperative resilience, sustainable development, and inclusive growth in the Asia-Pacific, Middle East, and North Africa. Some of the objectives of the ministerial conference, sir, which were, but not limited to, to examine the current state of cooperatives in the Asia-Pacific and their potential for contributing to resilience, sustainable development, and growth. Two, to analyze existing partnerships, between governments and cooperatives in the region, 
and identify successful models that have yielded positive outcomes to highlight the benefits of collaborative initiatives between government and cooperatives, including improved access to resources, enhanced regulatory frameworks, and social inclusion to identify challenges and obstacles in building effective partnerships and propose strategies to overcome them, and finally, to provide recommendations to policymakers and cooperative stakeholders to strengthen and expand government cooperative partnerships for sustainable and inclusive development. Mr. Speaker, sir, the conference provided an excellent platform to share experience, understand the global developments, and reiterate our position on cooperative development. Mr. Speaker, sir, the conference covered the following topics and sessions, which included the study of uh, the assessment of partnerships between governments and cooperatives, statement by, there were statements by government representatives, the acceleration of a cooperative identity. Mr. Speaker, sir, the United General Assembly adopted a new resolution on cooperatives in social development on the 3rd of November 2023 calling for uh, the proclamation of 2025 as an international year of cooperatives. The resolution encourages member states of the, of the United Nations and other relevant stakeholders to take advantage of this proclamation to promote cooperatives, raise awareness of their contribution, the implementation of sustainable development goals, and their overall social and economic potential. This is indeed a wonderful outcome, Mr. Speaker, sir, and we intend, as a government, to optimize on this opportunity. There was also discussion around the adapting to the changing environment and building uh, resiliency, particularly when it comes to climate change. And one of the things that really struck me, sir, was for, for the governments of the, uh, that were in the uh, meeting, the, the direct connection between the advancement of the Sustainable Development Goals and what happens in their cooperative environment. Uh, SDG such as SDG 1, uh, no poverty, SDG 5, gender equality, SDG 8 and SDG 13 have been linked quite uh, closely uh, to uh, cooperatives and it's something that uh, we certainly as government will endeavour to do and also the uh, importance of the voluntary national reviews of VNRs in all these countries. In terms of our contribution at the conference, uh, the importance of cooperatives has been recognized across countries and is in some countries actually, sir, reflected in their national constitution. Strategy documents to enhance contribution to GDPs, the creation of new ministries as we have, as we have with Fiji, and the implementation of SDGs. I wish to shed some light on Fiji's contribution at the conference. During the discussions, I had elaborated on the following issues. Mr. Speaker, sir, I had provided an overview of the cooperative movement in Fiji. Some highlights provided included that there are 590 uh, operating cooperatives that exist across 15 sectors Collectively, they hold around 151 million worth of assets, earning around 26 million and generating 2.5 million in profits. I also spoke about the collaboration across government on how the Ministries of Agriculture, Fisheries and Forests, the Ministry of Youth and Sports, the Ministry of uh, Rural Development and the Ministry of Women have adopted a pro-cooperative approach in their work. In fact, the uh, Honourable Speaker said the Ministry of Minister of Sports has insisted for every youth club that they seriously contemplate developing a cooperative. This can only be a positive development uh, in this country. A proud moment also was when I reported on the increased interest in women-led cooperatives, Mr. Speaker, sir, over the past few years. Mr. Speaker, sir, from having 46 women-led cooperatives in 2022, we now have 58 in 2024. This number continues to grow as well. And in fact, in terms of women leadership, this has increased by over 236% over the same period as well. These stats were used to demonstrate internationally that the cooperative movement is vibrant and is very much alive in Fiji and the South Pacific. 
Mr. Speaker said during the sessions, I also took the opportunity to put forward our request to the International Cooperative Alliance. It was actually a long list, but we prioritized three areas. One, we made a call that the ICA establish an office in the South Pacific and seriously consider Fiji being the regional hub. Although we fall under Asia Pacific as a, as a grouping by region, all their offices are in Asia and have really advanced the cooperative movements in those areas, and we feel that it's time to be based, uh, have a basing in Fiji. We also made a request on, with the ICA regarding the view of our uh, Cooperatives Act. And this is quite important, sir, because it not only encapsulates the act, but also how uh, we can really boost the cooperative movement. And I'll share an example. In Jordan, they have cooperatives, a national cooperative for each agricultural sector. So, for instance, for dates, they have a national cooperative that manages the date, date production. And then each um, member uh, cooperative hinges into that, Mr. Speaker, sir. And that is uh, somewhere that I would like us to head, sir. Just imagine having a national cooperative for cover. It means better control on a cover, better pricing for our farmers. And these are the kind of benefits that uh, this uh, forward thinking will bring. Mr. Speaker, sir, we also sought advice on the National Cooperative Federation, which is a body that's already in the Act. As with other countries, it is proven that where strong functioning apex bodies for cooperatives exist, they do very well in their development. I understand, the, like I said, we already have a National Cooperative Federation body that was established in 2018. I think the former chairman is uh, sitting over there, Honorable Agni Singh. But for re obvious reasons, their progress was curtailed. And uh, Honorable Agni Singh, you will be pleased to note that we intend to rejuvenate uh, that body. Mr. Speaker, sir, I'm also happy to report that our requests were well received with the ICA, and they have affirmed their commitment in working with us on the issues we have mentioned. Mr. Speaker, sir, I would also like to place on record that the ministerial conference was indeed a very invaluable platform for Fiji to present at the table. Otherwise, we miss our opportunity to be heard at international levels. Some countries, particularly countries in the Asia and Middle East Eastern region, have developed a cooperative strategic plan. Fiji does not have one, but is earmarked to be part of the MSME strategic plan, which we are currently developing. We may even have a dedicated strategic plan for cooperative development going forward. And uh, the Australian government, or the Australian uh, Association for Cooperatives, has expressed an interest in working in that area. One of the other things that uh, uh, is of benefit to the country is the level of uh, desired cooperation that is now forthcoming from, apart from Australia, India, uh, Indonesia, Malaysia, sir, even Jordan, uh, in terms of trying to help us move our cooperative movement forward, which has clearly probably missed the boat in some respects uh, over the last uh, few years. We need to strengthen our education around cooperatives. We did had, uh, have that uh, facility down in Lamy um, and Ronnie Bota. In Malaysia, sir, we have two universities for cooperatives. So these are the types of things that uh, as a country and as an August body we should be looking at to ensure that going forward we truly uh, maximize the benefit that we can uh, 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 derive from uh, pushing cooperatives. Mr. Speaker, for, uh, Mr. Speaker, sir, as a way forward, I assure this August House that we will continue the discussions with the respective agencies, such as the ICA, Pacific Islands Forum Secretariat, and the Australian High Commission to implement these items and also look to the other partners, such as India, Indonesia, Malaysia, and Jordan, in terms of some of the areas that we can collaborate on. And incidentally, sir, in Jordan, I was quite surprised they're exporting banana from Jordan through a cooperative, sir. So this is the type of potential 
that uh, exists in that beautiful country. Mr. Speaker, sir, in conclusion, I can say that our participation was worthwhile and a success, and where Fiji reiterated its position as a regional leader to the ICA. It also demonstrated that Fiji is committed to the development cooperatives, and I look forward to continuing to work to ensure that the cooperative movement moves to bigger and greater heights. I thank you for this opportunity, Honorable Speaker, sir.